Hello everyone, welcome to Red Pine Quilt Shop here in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. I'm Connie, and today I'm going to do a part two, if you will, about different tools a beginning quilter might want to invest in, or someone who's setting up their own quilting room. It was probably a couple months ago that I talked with you about the basic um, tools that a quilter would need as they set up their own quilting supplies. Well, this is part two. Most of the tools are going to be about making accurate, consistent blocks. First thing I'm going to talk about is the seam roller. This has been a lifesaver for me. So in the seam roller, I've sewn two squares, two sets of squares together. I don't need to get up to go to the iron or anything. I can do it right at the sewing machine. I've set it down and I'm just going to roll it. The handy thing here is I don't have to get up. I don't need to have the ironing board near me. But you see, they really do press it out, but it's not distorting it. Now I did chain stitch these together so that it's ready to just match up those seams and sew together. And I'd have a very quick four patch. So this seam roller, it's a lifesaver for me. I also use the seam roller when I'm working with half square triangles. Half square triangles are such popular pieces of blocks. So I set it down. I'm just going to roll. I want to roll on this side. And you notice I'm making a real effort not to stretch. I have had some issues where I distorted by ironing, not pressing. Don't want to do that. So the seam roller is really a great, a great tool. My next tool that I'd like to recommend to you is the block lock ruler. And this is for the half square triangle. They come in many different sizes. You can buy them as sets or you can purchase them individually. Uh, one thing I really like about the block locks, there's a very supportive online service with tutorials and also charts telling you how big you need to cut these and um, how much fabric you're going to need. But take a look at how precise I'm going to set this on. Let's go with a four and a half inch. You see, I've got my four and a half. Just going to cut it. And another one of my tools that's a favorite is the rotating mat. Now this one has been well used. It's probably time for me to um, invest in a new one. But you notice this groove lines up on the seam. And I end up with a perfect half square triangle. Now, I could also trim this one. I don't know if you noticed, but I pressed the same color. And if I were to put these together, the seams meet perfectly, and I would have a very accurate, um, if I was doing like a pinwheel block. So right now, my recommendation is the seam roller, the rotating mat, and the block lock ruler for the half square triangle. Really great tools. A couple of other tools I'd like to mention are these misters. Now this one has water in it. I usually don't ever put water in my iron. I like to just, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but I like to just mist. And this is such a fine mist. It's really nice for pressing my blocks. I have another one that has some best press in it. Again, it uses a, a very little amount of the product, so the product lasts a long time, but you get really good results. The acorn um, is also the same. You know, the pieces, it comes in a set with the mister. I can't talk about these misters enough and how they really give you a, a great block when you're done pressing. A couple of other things about organizing. My big thing about organizing would be the bobbin holders. 
If you have bobbins that are rolling around in a box somewhere, it's going to be a tangled mess. Um, these are just great. I especially like these small ones because I, if I'm going somewhere, I'll put the bobbins I need or I'll thread for um, some bobbins for some free motion quilting, and then I know that they're all set. Some other tools that I think are really helpful, staying organized and having everything you need right at your fingertips. Um, this would hold your presser foots. And these would keep your supplies, your small rulers, things right at your fingertips. You wouldn't have to be you know, rummaging around in a shoebox or a, a tote or something. Now I'm just gonna give a very quick, oh yes, here's a rotating mat, a little bit bigger than mine. But the rotating mat is really a, a great investment. I would say that a lot of these uh, mats and rulers have this QR code so that you can look up online for some tips and um, how to use it. Now I'm not gonna mention a lot about marking pencils. I have some sets over here. I know that Joy recently talked about them on a live. What I would say is I try to keep the, pla the paper that they come with so that I can stay really accurate on which one is water erase, which one is air erase. Uh, there are some that are kind of reactivated by cold, which is a problem here in Minnesota in the winter. So just be sure that the marker, marker that you're using is doing what you expect. You don't have any unpleasant surprises. One of my favorite splurges are these wonder clips. I just can't say enough about them. If you have a new quilter on your Christmas list, I think this would be a great thing. And as always, I recommend that you have extra sets of needles and blades ready to go. Because if you change out your needles and your blades frequently, I think it's going to be much more pleasant for you sewing. So these are some of the tools that I would recommend, kind of the second set of things for someone who's establishing their own quilting um, tools and their sewing room. I do have a couple of other things. Um, a couple of years ago at a quilt retreat, I did use a design wall and I really liked it. I don't have much space for a design wall in my sewing room. But last week I was working on a, a round robin block and I thought I'm gonna go get this old foil cloth tablecloth. You know, you use them a couple times for a picnic in the summer. And I folded it and I just hung it over my door. I didn't have to put up any nails, um, nothing. I just hung it over the door and I was able to work on a design wall vertically with this block that I was working on. And I noticed it's such a difference looking at it vertically rather than having it lay on the floor or a table or the bed. And then you're kind of looking at a sideways. So give a design wall a try and just see if it's something that would work for you. And finally, I'm going to challenge all of you to get out your sewing machine manuals. Now, I got a sewing machine decades ago for a graduation gift. I always kept the manual out, but if you notice, I was using it for a coaster. I'm not sure I ever opened it. I had it, but I didn't use it. I'm going to recommend use your manual. So I have my manual here. A couple things I want to try. A blind hem, the smock stitching, uh, darning stitch, and attaching elastic. I just thought someday when I have a few minutes I'm going to try some of these things. The other thing I'd recommend, keeping your manual handy, mark pages. This one is about the stitch settings. I use this page and I don't want to have to look it up or, or try to find it. Another one is the care and maintenance. Some errors. What do you do about it? Another page that I've marked about the thread and the bobbins. It would be great to mark how do you clean your machine out. So let me challenge you, new sewers and old, get out your manual, 
find some new things you've never tried on it, mark some of those spots that might be frequently looked for, and have it handy. And I think probably you'll get more out of your machine and your uh, blocks you make are probably going to be best they can be. So for today, thank you for listening. And these are some tips for people who are just setting up their sewing room and their quilting supplies. Thanks for watching. <music>